In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about the respiratory regulation of blood pH. Respiratory system is very important for the regulation of blood pH. Now the overall mechanism or overall uh, the picture is that, that whenever blood pH is decreased, at that time respiratory system senses this low pH and it acts in a way which ultimately leads to increase in the blood pH. The reverse is also true. Whenever blood pH is increased, this increased pH is sensed by this respiratory system and this respiratory system acts in a way which ultimately leads to decrease in the pH. So as you can see that decreased pH is counteracted by the increased pH whereas increased pH is counteracted by the decreased pH by our respiratory system. Okay, so we have to understand this overall mechanism. So here we have two questions to ask. The first question is related with this phase that how respiratory system changes the changes in the pH, right? So how respiratory system senses the changes in the pH. This is the first question. The second question is related with this phase of action and that is that how respiratory system is able to alter the pH. How respiratory system is able to alter the pH. Now to understand this both the concept clearly we have to revisit our henderson hasselbeck equation in the earlier video we had seen we had discussed about the henderson hasselbeck equation and this equation states that ph is equal to 6.1 plus log of molar concentration of bicarbonate that is hco3 minus divided by 0 0.03 into partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide Right. So, based on this henderson hasselbeck equation, we can say that pH is dependent on two main factor. One is bicarbonate concentration and second one is the carbon dioxide partial pressure. Right. This bicarbonate is handled by the renal system or kidneys. Right. Whereas, this partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide, it is handled by the respiratory system. Respiratory system right now let's see that how respiratory system is involved in the maintenance of ph so basically our respiration it is controlled by the medullary respiratory center medullary respiratory center this is the one portion of the brain which is located in the medulla which controls all overall respiration so medullary respiratory centers they are in like one of two state they are either stimulated or they are inhibited okay so this is our medullary respiratory center and it remains in the one of two state either it may be stimulated or it may be inhibited so whenever medullary respiratory centers they are stimulated what happens they stimulates respiratory muscle so respiratory muscles will work more and this leads to increase in the respiratory rate whenever there is increased respiratory rate at that time what will happen to the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide will be washed out from our body so there will be decrease in the partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide that is decrease PSCO2. Now if you look at the henderson hasselbeck equation you can see that if this PSCO2 is decreased what it will lead to? It will lead to increase in the pH. So this decrease PSCO2 based on henderson hasselbeck equation I can say that it leads to increase in the pH. right? Now let us see what will happen when medullary respiratory centers they are in inhibited state. So at that time respiratory muscles will be inhibited. So there is a decrease in the respiratory rate and whenever there is decrease in the respiratory rate what will happen carbon dioxide will not able to leave our body. 
carbon dioxide will remain retained in our body. So, this leads to increase partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide. And again based on Henderson Hasselbeck equation, we can say that there is a decrease in the pH. Right. So, by this we had answered this question that how respiratory system is able to alter the pH. Right. So, respiratory center is able to alter the pH by alteration in the this carbon dioxide level. Now, how this medullary respiratory center will determine that it has to remain in the stimulated state or it has to remain in the inhibited state. So, medullary respiratory center they do not determine on their own, but rather it depends on various inputs and there is two broad categories of this input. One is the central input. So, there is one category which is known as central input and other category is the peripheral input. So, central inputs are those inputs which received by this medullary respiratory center from the central nervous system whereas peripheral inputs are those inputs which are received from the peripheral nervous system. Let us first talk about the central input. The most important central input is from the central chemoreceptor, central <coughs> chemoreceptors. This central chemoreceptors, they are located on the ventral surface of the medulla, ventral surface of medulla. Okay. Now, this central chemoreceptors and they are located on the ventral surface of medulla, they are sensitive to decrease in the pH. So, whenever they sense that pH is decreased, they stimulate this medullary respiratory center and we know that what will happen to this medullary respiratory center when they are stimulated, they increase the respiratory rate, right. They are also sensitive to increase in the pH. This central chemoreceptor, they are also sensitive to increase in the pH. So, whenever this central chemoreceptor senses there is increase in the pH, at that time they send inhibitory signals to this medullary respiratory center. So, this medullary respiratory center remains inhibited and they decrease respiratory rate. So, this is the main central input. There are several minor, uh, minor central inputs are also there. So, such minor central input is cerebral cortex, cerebral cortex. So, this cerebral cortex, it is sensitive to pain and anxiety. Whenever there is a pain and anxiety, this cerebral cortex, it sends stimulatory signal to this medullary respiratory center and you can uh, you can easily correlate also that whenever we are in the pain or whenever we are anxious our respiratory rate increases now you know why respiratory rate increases right and you we also know that our respiration rate is also in our voluntary control right so that voluntary control it is also from this cerebral cortex that we don't have to forget okay the third, the next minor central input, the next minor central input is from the pneumotoxic and apneustic center. So, pneumotoxic, pneumotaxic and apneustic center, apneustic center. This exact role is not known, they are located in the pons. The exact role of this pneumotaxic and apneustic center, it is known, not known, but the interesting thing is that they provide input to this medullary respiratory center as well as medullary respiratory center also provide input to this pneumotaxic and apneustic center. So, there is a bilateral relationship and exact function is not known, but it is believed that this is for the fine tuning of respiration, right. And the last minor central input is from the progesterone receptor, progesterone receptors, 
Now again the exact location of progesterone receptor it is not known but whenever progesterone is present it binds with the progesterone receptors in the CNS and it stimulates our medullary respiratory center. So we can imagine that whenever progesterone is present it leads to stimulation of medullary respiratory center. If we talk about these peripheral inputs the most important peripheral input it is from the peripheral chemoreceptors. So this is peripheral chemoreceptors. These peripheral chemoreceptors they are located in the carotid bodies and aortic bodies. So carotid and aortic bodies. These carotid bodies they are more active in adults and aortic bodies they are more active in children. Right. Now these peripheral chemoreceptors they are sensitive to variety of stimulus. So for example decrease in the pH, increase in the partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide or decrease in the partial pressure of arterial oxygen. This three factor acts as a stimulus for the peripheral chemoreceptor which further sends a stimulus to this medullary respiratory centers. Right? So, whenever these conditions are present, it leads to stimulation of medullary respiratory center which further increase the respiration rate. But it also senses increase in the pH and decrease in the partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide. Now, whenever there is increased pH or decrease in the pSeO2, it is sensed by peripheral chemoreceptors and it sends inhibitory signals to this medullary respiratory center. Now you might be wondering that we had included reversal of this pH and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in this. What about this increased partial pressure of arterial oxygen? What this will lead to? So surprisingly increase partial pressure of arterial oxygen it is not acting as an inhibitory signal to this medullary respiratory center and actually this is good. This is fortunate event. Why? See, what could just for a moment suppose that this increased partial pressure of oxygen leads to inhibition of medullary respiratory center. Then what will happen? So frequently in the hospital to many patient we give supplemental oxygen, right? So when we give supplemental oxygen it leads to immediate, immediate rise in the partial pressure of oxygen and if this could inhibit this medullary respiratory center, particular patient may cease to breathe. But this is actually not happening. The reason is that that increased partial pressure of oxygen, it does not lead to inhibition of medullary respiratory center. So this thing we have to keep in mind. This peripheral chemoreceptors, these are the main peripheral input to the medullary respiratory centers. The next, there are several minor peripheral inputs are also there. So, one such minor peripheral input is juxta capillary receptors. Juxta capillary receptors. It is also known as J receptors. And they are located in the alveolar walls. Alveolar walls. Right. Now, this juxta capillary receptors they are get stimulated whenever there is an interstitial fluid which is present in the alveolar wall. Whenever there is increased interstitial fluid in the alveolar wall, this juxta capillary receptors get stimulated. And in what condition there is increased interstitial fluid in the alveolar wall? We call it as a pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema. So, whenever pulmonary edema is there, it leads to increase interstitial fluid in the alveolar wall which leads to stimulation of juxta capillary receptors which in turn sends stimulatory signal to this medullary respiratory center. So, we can imagine that in pulmonary, pulmonary edema there will be increased respiratory rate. The next minor peripheral input is the stretch receptor. Stretch receptors. Now, these stretch receptors as their name suggests they are sensitive to stretch. So, they are located in the smooth muscle cell of alveoli. 
and as I told you that as per their name, they are sensitive to stretch. So whenever there is over distension, over distension of lungs, what will happen? This stretch receptors get activated and they send inhibitory signals to this medullary respiratory center, right? And the last minor variety of this, sorry, the last minor variety of this peripheral input is irritant receptor, irritant receptors. And these irritant receptors are located on the airway epithelial cell, airway epithelial cells. They are sensitive to variety of chemicals, particularly noxious chemicals, noxious chemicals. They are also sensitive to histamine and prostaglandins, histamine and prostaglandins. So whenever these things are present, they lead to stimulation of this irritant receptor, which in turn stimulates our medullary respiratory center. Right. So here we can see that whenever there is low pH or here also whenever there is low pH, it leads to stimulation of this medullary respiratory center. It leads to stimulation of medullary respiratory center, which in turn increase the respiratory rate, which leads to decrease in the carbon dioxide level, which leads to increase in the pH. So here story started with the low pH, story ended with the high pH. So any change in the pH is mitigated over here. Let us look at what will happen when the pH is increased. So when pH is increased, it leads to inhibition of medullary respiratory center. The same thing over here, increase pH, it leads to inhibition of medullary respiratory center, which leads to decrease respiratory rate, increase PSEO2 and decrease pH. So increase pH is also mitigated by the respiratory center. Okay. So this is overall mechanism that how respiratory system regulates blood pH. But on the way of learning this, we had also learned something extra. Let's summarize this extra thing. Let's try to summarize that what are the causes of increased respiratory rate. So if you look carefully, of course, it's a low pH, which is the cause of increased respiratory rate, pain, anxiety. It is also a cause of increased respiratory rate, then presence of progesterone. It also leads to increased respiratory rate, increased partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide, decreased partial pressure of arterial oxygen, then uh, pulmonary edema and then uh, smell of noxious chemicals or presence of histamines and prostaglandins in the alveolar epithelium all can lead to increase in the respiratory rate. What about decreased respiratory rate? What are the causes of decreased respiratory rate? So as already discussed, increased pH can cause decrease in the respiratory rate plus only one more condition is there that decrease PSEO2 can also lead to decrease in the respiratory rate. So to decrease respiratory rate, only two factors are present. Whereas to increase respiratory rate, we have so many different factors. And you can consider it in, in the protective manner. Like only two factors can inhibit medullary respiratory center, right? Why? Because our respiratory system is very much responsible for maintenance of proper oxygenation level and this oxygenation, it is important for the, our survival, right? So there are very less factors which can inhibit respiratory center. So this is all about respiratory regulation of blood pH. In the next video, I will discuss about the renal regulation of pH. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.